Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, we will be talking about the principle of virtual work and how an analytical approach to mechanics can help us get the equations of motion in a more simple manner. Let's jump right in. Like I said, we are talking about the analytical approach to mechanics, and that one is based on the concept of energy and work. So we're thinking about how much energy is in our system or how much work are the forces performing with uh, the effective forces, so the known forces, or how much work is done by the reaction forces. And those provide us with a better understanding of mechanical phenomenon. And we have three main points. So the first one is that it simplifies the formulation of the system equation of equations of motion. The most important part here is system because we don't not only have one body that is moving in 3D space, but we have multiple bodies that are coupled with each other and can perform different uh, motions. The second one is it gives us the option to use numerical methods to solve those equations of motion. And of course, the most important part is that the concept of constraints is central. So we are not looking at constraints as something that is just there and that we have to work around, but we're actually using the constraints to our advantage to get the equations of motion. So without much talking, let's jump right in and look at the first example. So we are doing the principle of virtual work. And for that, we will be looking at a simple pendulum. So we have our mass M that is connected with a basically a rod or a string with length L to this is our origin. We know the we know that the, we have two equation in equations in direction x and direction y. So look, let's look at direction x first. The mass times the acceleration in direction x is equal to the force of gravity plus the reaction forces. The same is valid for the direction y. So m times acceleration in direction y zero gravity is acting in this direction. So we have a zero, but we have reaction forces. And the reaction forces are of course, the first, this is our X and this is our R Y. And together they result into this. So the last thing that we have is x squared plus y squared equals l squared. This is our constraint because our mass can only move basically on a circular path and we enforce that by having this constraint. Together, these three equations are considered a algebraic differential equation system. So we have the algebraic part because of the x squared plus y squared equals l squared. And we have the differential part because we have x double dot and y double dot. So in this case, we have three equations and three unknowns. Those are x, y, and r. And now we have to solve them. This could be possible to do it just like that with those equations, but this is very, very difficult or unnecessarily difficult because we have a very simple system. And you might think, well, why do I have a system for a basically a single point mass that is moving in 2D space and I have three equations for a, a system that is not really complicated. And to simplify this, we will use the principle of virtual work. But the first thing we have to do is reconsider or basically repeat what we already know about the scalar product and the dot product. So the scalar product is V transposed U and if the vectors are orthogonal to each other, the result is zero. If the vectors are not orthogonal to each other, like A and B in this case, the result is not zero. So we have the vector one, one, zero. This is the vector A transposed. And we have B, this is a two, zero, zero. The result is two. And if we want to do a projection now, we do the same thing. So we have, we want to transpose uh, project i onto j. So we do i transpose j. This is again the two that we had before divided by the length of the vector j squared. So the length is two squared. We get a four times the direction of the vector that we are projecting onto. This is j. So two zero zero and we get 
one zero zero as the result. So the scalar product or dot product is used as a projection from of one vector onto another one. And this is the most important part when you uh, that you have to know and understand when you're talking about the principle of virtual work. So what we do now is look at the pendulum. So here again, we have our mass and our mass can move on this circle and the direction it can move at any point in time is of course, sorry for that. Let's scroll all the way up. There we go. The direction it can move is always on a tangent. So this is our tangent. It will never move in this direction because here the constraint is prohibiting the mass to move in that direction because L is always constant. So we can only move in this direction or in this direction. In this case, we're only talking about infinitesimally small movements. So this will change at every point in time. So the direction will change, but it will be always be orthogonal. And all the positions the mass can take, in this case, a circle is called a configuration space because all the configurations that are summed up is basically our space that our system can take and we call it configuration space. So like I said, our possible directions are always orthogonal to our uh, circle, to our possible movements. And what we do now is we don't think about the, the direction where our particle is moving to, but we're actually thinking about where it could move to. So it can technically move in this direction or it could move in that direction. And this is where the virtual part in the principle of virtual uh, work comes into play. We're not actually moving the part, we're only thinking about where it could move. So this is our possible virtual displacement. Next, we uh, introduce a new notation. So we have M times the acceleration in direction Y plus the force in Y mi uh, minus the force in I minus the reaction forces in direction I. And this of course has to be in equilibrium and that's why it's zero. So this is basically, we rewrote this one as that. And now we introduce the actual principle of virtual work. So we consider this one as some kind of force and this is our displacements du. So force times displacement into direction of the force is work. So this is exactly what we are doing. We are projecting our forces into the direction that our particle could move to. And now we actually did something that might look a bit confusing uh, at first glance because we had the unknowns u double dot, we had the unknowns r, y, uh, r, i, and now we have unknowns du. But if we think about it a little more, we see that something is happening between the reaction forces and the virtual displacement. So let's have it in vector notation. So we have our M times, here will be our U's minus, these are our forces, minus the unknown reaction forces, times our, for now, unknown virtual displacements. We have all this transposed. And now we look at just the reaction forces and DU, so possible virtual displacements. So like I said before, this direction R is basically the same as our vector L. So our reaction forces always go in the same direction as our constraint. And our possible virtual displacements are always in a tangent and orthogonal to the reaction forces. So when we do a scalar product from the reaction forces and the virtual displacements, they will be zero. So what we get from that is we can cancel the reaction forces and now we are not, ha we basically remove one, one variable from our equations of motion. 
This might be a little bit confusing in the beginning, but if we look at a example, this should be very clear. So again, these are the equations that we had before. We have m times u i u1 double dot and m times u2 double dot. We have the force of gravity, zero force of gravity in the y direction, and we have two reaction forces. So we have the reaction force in this one, the reaction force here, and those basically result into the reaction force in that direction. Now we have to express our positions. So we have, we know the length and we know our angle theta. So our position u1 is cosine theta l. We derive it once, derive it twice, and we have our acceleration. We do the same thing for direction two. So we have u2 is sine theta times l, derive it once, derive it a second time, we have the acceleration in direction two. Now we look at the reaction forces. So the reaction force, this is our reaction force. If this is theta, we have theta here as well. So this will be the cosine and this will be the sine. So reaction force in reaction force one is minus cosine and the reaction force two in direction two is minus sine theta times r. Now we do the vector notation that we had before. So we have, sorry for that. We do the vector notation that we had before. We have our m times our u minus our forces minus the reaction forces. All this has to be transposed times our du. So now we have to find out what our du's are. We do this here. So this is again our, uh, sorry, this is our theta. So this is also our theta. Then we have a possible direction of, this is the cosine, this is direction two, this was direction one. So we have in the first direction, we go minus theta. And in the second dire direction, we go uh, uh, minus sine theta. And in the second direction, we go plus cosine theta. <coughs> and in this case, because we're only considering the direction, we are not thinking about the length of this possible virtual displacement, so we can just basically set it to zero uh, to one. So now, now that we know the possible virtual displacements and we have our reaction forces, we can actually check if our reaction forces transposed du are actually zero. So these are our transposed reaction forces and this is our virtual displacement. And now we multiply this one with that one and this one with this one. Nothing is happening in the third direction because we're in 2D, so we just ignore it. If we write it out, we have sine theta times cosine theta minus sine theta times cosine theta and our scalar r. And we don't care about r because this is zero. So the term in the brackets is zero and we actually that we were right that the reaction forces are orthogonal to our virtual displacements and this is why we can get rid of them if we project our forces into the direction compatible with the constraints. So again we had our, let's look at it here, we had our forces, so let's get rid of this one, we have our reaction forces we have our reaction force R and we have our forces in, uh, because of gravity. This is our possible virtual displacement. And if we do the scalar product, we project the force into this direction and we get rid of the reaction force. So this will be our force because of G, we do F G dash basically because this is a projected force. And because we project, again, R is gone.
So what we are left with is m times u double dot minus x transposed times du. And we know all these variables because all of these variables are defined. So we, we basically just write it all out. We have our accelerations transposed times our virtual placements will result in this multiplied with that one and this multiplied with this one will give us this lengthy expression. And what we see right from the get-go is that we have a cosine, sorry, we have a sine cosine times L theta dot squared and here we have sine cosine L theta dot squared. So this one and this one cancel each other out. The next thing that we see if we have a minus sine uh, squared and a minus cosine squared with the same factor at the end. And we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So this will basically just be minus L times theta dot. So what we are left with is this one and that one. So we are left with L times theta double dot minus sine theta times G. We multiply it with minus one and we get sine theta times G plus L times theta double dot. And this is our simple equation of motion that we got from projecting our forces from the system into directions compatible with the constraints. And this is how we get rid of the reaction forces and we don't see them in our equation of motion anymore. So this system is much easier to solve than the algebraic differential system that we had here. I hope this video gave you a basic understanding on how to work with the principle of virtual work. If you're interested in more examples or other videos on this topic, uh, check my channel or the links in the, description, in the description. If you have any questions or if you're interested in other topics in engineering dynamics, you can write them in the comments and I will do my best to make videos about those topics. Thank you very much and see you next time.